Hello and welcome to another Let's Play. Me, Yamu6 of Shelter. Before we start, if you're interested in playing this game, you can get it for free on itch.io. But if you want to support the people that make this game and get the news version earlier, you can go to their Patreon. I didn't actually look it up this time. Sorry. It could be three or five dollars. It isn't much. So, on the last Let's Play, it was more of Max's past, but from Max's perspective, and it basically consists of them being experimented on, them with the cats, you know, very bad things happening, and um, them being in shelter and consolidating power, including the part where... What is his name? Matt, well, Max's twin brother is seducing... Sorry, I'm bad with names, but the main character, so that they won't be so mad about, you know, sending the Winter Knots to get caught by the wolves. But yeah, it has been a hot minute since I've done this thing. I really need to post the videos, especially since the public version's been out for a while. But it did be like that, and it's been crazy. Sorry. So, set my face, and continue. Unfortunately, that was in the end of our issues. Both you and Rune eventually came to terms with Akri's solution, but Shagbark and his dogs weren't gone for long. I wonder how they got out. I guess we'll see in a sec. Soon, released by Grove's authorities, they came back to harass us as bandits, assaulting and robbing shelters' excavation parties. I'd have to assume that the Grove didn't just wasn't just like, well, we're being completely lenient right now, so you guys get to go. I'm assuming that they're working for the Grove. The first time that happened was very important to me. It was the first time you allowed me to take a glimpse of your greatness. I still remember the rage I felt when I rushed out to help Cooper and his dogs. I knew my man at Crystal was already starting to weaken and strain, but I couldn't just stay still. Despite Akri's objections, I ran into battle against Shagbark and the Eternal Winter Knots. Whiff! I duck, barely avoiding Alpine Sword Slash. The moment I try to strike, he follows up with another slash and dodge. He's seen enough of my fine style to come up with counters. He knows I can break swords, so he doesn't guard with that flat side of his blade. He's fully aware of my limited range, so he uses quick slashes to always keep me at the length of his blade. A lot of my battle advantage lies in taking my enemy by surprise, with abilities they wouldn't expect from a small, frail dog. Without that, it becomes a fair battle, and I don't do well that far. Then again, it seems that neither do they. Cooper, the Caucasian, and his pack are tired and outnumbered. He pants and grunts, facing three enemies at once. I have to get rid of Alpine before Shepard gets overwhelmed. The Shepard. Woof. I keep my stance, ignoring my foe's witty taunts, like bark, grr, and oo I came here to help, not to be a burden. Whatever I do next, it has to be well thought out and purposeful. If I don't find an opening soon, they'll... Ah, uh, woo I dodge, feeling Shagbark's prosing presence, even before hearing his battle bark. I roll away from them, trying my best to avoid be getting surrounded by the economy against the giant boulder. I twist my body and move my hands mere centimeters by the swooshing blades, but none of them gives me the opportunity to disarm them. It's like they spent days trained to defeat me specifically. This is getting bad. I'm not the best in fair combat, and fighting against multiple opponents and the same t at the same time isn't my speciality either. On more than one occasion... Oop, sorry. Like, it's a... It's late at night, and it's been, it has been a long couple of weeks. But I wanted to, you know, finish this group. They graze my clothes and armor pieces. 
They block my paths of escape. Whenever, whenever I gamble with counterattack, they saw me through their flawless unity. Wherever I step back, or whenever, a shadow of a stone wall looms over me. I don't know what to do. There's no way I can escape without being hurt. But if I don't do anything now, they'll... Max, duck! Duck, where? Both Shagbark and Alpine are blown from blown to the side with a single powerful strike of Cooper's giant metal club. He came to aid me right on time. He defeated his three enemies. No, he didn't. I can see a bad bruise under his eye. A dagger stick between one of the joints of his armor. Thick blood drops down one of his shoulders. And his enemies are already getting back up and rush towards us. Did he? Yes, he didn't defeat them. He simply rushed through their assault to help me, seeing I was being cornered by Shagbark and Alpine. Alfie? Okay. I try to read. He jumped through the blades and maces for my protection. Not caring what kind of pain he would he would have to endure for that maneuver. Now charge! In response to their leader shout, all the dogs around us run at Cooper, who stands over me. He grunts in pain, but his fighting spirit still burns bright in his eyes. I don't know how I don't know Cooper the Caucasian too well, but he is evidently an outstanding dog. When Akri decided to bring me to shelter, I wanted to learn the good side of being a canine. And Cooper is the most awe-inspiring embodiment of those virtues. I feel connection to him, just like, just like I rushed out to help him them despite Acri's objections. He jumped through blades and fangs to protect me. Weirdly, the sight of all the enemies swinging and thrusting their swords at Cooper is enough to smother that awe. I know virtues like that don't win battles, but still. One day, I want to be as brave as Cooper, the Caucasian. No, not one day. Right now. I've been focusing so hard on not getting hurt that I'm making this dog spill his blood in my place. I'm done holding back. I tap into the power of my feline mana crystal, spreading its force across my whole body. Not just my hands. All of it. With a loud shout, I jump in front of the shepherd and grab two of the oncoming blades with my bare hands. I twist my body in a way so that more of them sink into my shoulder, stomach, leg. And then, with a high-pitched concophony of magic, I shatter and blast all of those weapons into sharp metal shrapnels, making their wielders recoil in pain. I barely support myself on my knees and shoulder, analyzing the damage I inflicted on my body. I hear Cooper's voice of concern. So I stand up, bleeding and unwavering. I gaze at Shagbark. Chow! An arrow sinks into Alfie's back. Another one barely misses Shagbark. The dogs of the Eternal Winter Knots start running away as their own pack finally arrives on the battlefield. At that moment, terrible pain erupts in my leg. I feel the magic of the crystal leaking out in, into, out into my blood, impossible to stop. I fall back on my knees and burn all the mana to turn the rock bed below me into gravel, gravel into sand, sand into fine powder. Still, the pain only keeps getting worse. I fall on my side, coiling in pain while more of the mana keeps leaking out. This power of yours, it's like... Rest assured, your secret's safe with me, my savior. Max! How could you? You... No, you can't. I raise my head to see my brother's furious face. The human and the old blue healer are right behind him. Acri looks at him like he wants to say something more, but in the end, he just scoffs. Running after Shagbark, Luke, Thistle, taking brother to the medic. It's okay, we have a healer right here, 
Come on, Cooper, do your magic. Cooper doesn't reply, having his gaze locked on the human's mouth as he spews white clouds of steam from each tired breath. A similar kind of steam rises from the corner of the shepherd's floppy ears. Well, I guess he can't magic it out without Syrian magic, right? Whatever, just do something. Take him back to shelter, find a medic. Just not bury Tango Root. I'll be right back, Max. Stay strong. Luke will take care of you. And he's gone. Some brother you have, Max. Poor boy. He's doing this because he knows he can trust us, sir. Please, don't be harsh on Acri. Hey, is Cooper alright? Oh, this big dolt? Yeah, he's fine. He's just being a bit a giant pup. Don't worry about him. He's my burden. You have yours. Come on, boy. Snap out of it. You still have work to do. Bonk. The old dog whacks his shepherd's head with his gnarled stick and rushes him away towards a couple of remaining dogs from the pack, probably to tend to everyone's injuries. It's amusing to see Sir Thistle commanding Coop rounds like that. But then again, he is from one of the old shepherd's clans too. Shepherd clan too. Even though he has no ambition for leadership, he still has it in his blood. I see a virtue in the way Sir Thistle deals with people. He has a bit of a reputation as brash, nosy old man, but to me, that's a wonderful expression of sincerity. That's the kind of person I'd like to become one day. Someone who doesn't lie, but also someone who doesn't shy away from the responsibility of sticking to his principles. Right now, I can't do any of that, but if I could, if only I could speak, if only I could tell them all those thoughts that I have on my mind, just like he does. Do you guys not have the ability to write? Yes. One day, I want to be honest as Thistle be healer. But who am I kidding? I'm not going to live long enough to do any of that. Come on, Max. Let's get you some help. The human kneels beside me, exposing his back. I carefully turn towards him and embrace him, letting him carry me. We start tracing our paw prints back to shelter. Usually, I think I'd like to be more apprehensive about being so close to someone who is my brother. However, it feels much different with a human. We all know he's special in various ways, but to me, his uniqueness feels almost personal in a way. I still feel the terrible unbalance inside my spirit due to the two mana types crawling back between each other, but this presence put me at ease. If only I can remain calm, if only I can keep it under control a little longer, a little longer. Suddenly, the torrent of pain explodes through my whole leg. Then, it spreads to the other. I go blind from this torrent as it burns through my groin and stomach. I land in the snow, but suffer so much I barely even register the fall. I want to wriggle and cower, but all of my muscles spasm uncontrollably. I completely lost the balance. Max, what's wrong? How close are we to shelter? Somebody, help! But only my brother can help me. He's the only one who knows what's wrong with me. He figured out ways of cleansing me of the crystal's man overload. But he's not here. He saw my physical wounds, but he didn't know how badly I overworked my crystal. Without him, without anyone to save me, I'm... I can feel a touch, a connection inside me. There's those weird, like, snuffleupagus again. The two men inside me biting into each other, merging, infecting each other into something impure and repulsive. 
I let out shouts with a voice that isn't mine. I think thoughts of a stranger, and my eyes gaze at the horrors beyond darkness. What a pathetic end to a pointless existence. So much effort put into sustaining something that can be snuffed out with barely a flutter of a world's breath. My story, my life, they didn't even start. I wanted to learn, and grow, and be. I want my life, and my death, to have meaning. But the world doesn't owe me anything. We strive to live with virtue, but the world itself is built on anything but. Yes, this world, truly, is hell. The pain persists, my muscles still spasm, but through the incomprehensible noise of everything all at once, something clear pierces through, a voice, no words, and yet with purpose, with meaning, with beauty. It feels like my whole being is submerged in an essence, existence ending horror, but that voice is like a beacon, just like the darkness is everywhere as well. And it leads me. It pulls at something hidden deep inside me. Something fragile and honest. I open my mouth and let my own voice run free. It joins with the other one beyond the darkness. I'm a new yet familiar sense of unity in a new. It's like I've been a stranger to myself my whole life. And now, I finally know who I am. Feeling better? Oh, don't cry. Or maybe do. It's okay. All you need to know is I won't let anything bad happen to you. I'd rather die than let you turn into a monster. I promise. I still wonder how all of that looked from your eyes. There's so much I want to understand about you, but you yourself are as incomprehensible as the very darkness you fight. Sorry, I don't want to be weird about idolizing you, but I do. When you brought me back from corruption through your song and woke up to, woke up to the touch of your hand on mine, the sight of, you, of your smiling blue eyes that became the most important moment of my life. I hope you can forgive me for being so corny and sappy. That's just how I am, I suppose. But I wouldn't have it any other way. In fact, that the fact that I'm still alive is a tenfold miracle, brought through the effort of many good people, and I intend to live my life sincerely. I still wonder why you chose to sing a song that time. I've heard bits and pieces of Burry and Rune stories, and that was never part of your magic, was it? Maybe there's no magic in the song itself, at least not in the sense of manic spell. You simply sing it out of kindness to calm me down, right? I wish I had the chance to ask you those questions much sooner. Akri knew I used my mana crystal, but he never found out how bad I actually got. You also told him, but I stopped you. I pleaded with my eyes to not tell him. The truth was, I started noticing progressing changes in Akri's behavior. I knew he still loved me, and his care for me guided many actions, but I felt he also started becoming more confused. I mean, you saw me chase after Shagbark instead of staying with me when I got wounded. Later on, he tried to kill Burry, even though he was the only dog who could possibly save my disintegrating spine. The hate inside him grew as strong as the love. His eyes, once locked on the one thing 
that was close and important were now set on the troubles of many. Sometimes I still beat myself over not dealing with him sooner. He got you all convinced with his words, but I was truly aware he was changing in scary ways. I caused so much damage to everyone by being weak, pathetic, everything that happened. But we'll get to that soon. Oop, shoot. Boop. Before we do, please let me share at least this last bright memory before anything turned to crap. Everything. The day you signed me my role. Hey Max, sorry for keep you waiting. I wagged my tail and smiled at the human, feeling the sun and cold wind on my fur. So relaxing, I almost didn't notice him. Let me shut my face just case. <sighs> I am pretty tired, but I would do visual novels, you know. It's nice to just take it easy once in a while. I don't tend to do that often. Thanks again for helping me with relics. I'd die of boredom if I were to do that on my own all the time. You know, I had to do that with Burry in the past, then with Rune. Now, both of them are too busy to help me. Well, Burry sometimes joins me, but his free time shrinks more and more every month. He's still working himself to the bone for us. That dog. Just so you know, I wouldn't hold it against you if you decided one day that you're just too busy to work with me anymore. With Hackery away, I'm keeping you all to myself. But there must be things you want to explore. Sorry. I hate when I yawn because it's like, it makes him feel like, oh yes, this story, but it's like, reading makes me yawn. Also, I've just been hella exhausted, like, the past month. Anyways, sure. Burry, Rune, Acri, and I've, and all I found are fitting roles in shelter, and nobody forces into any of that. Ideally, I'd like you to do the same one day. For now, take it easy, and save your strength. Everyone cares about you very much. Yes, they do. Ever since the words about my situation reached me, Burry and Rune, they've been very supportive and kind to me. Rune started approaching me even more often and forcing me to join him in the tavern. And Burry has been doing regular checkups on me, and racking his brain for solutions. I have never heard him say anything of an apology, but I can see how intimately he treats my case. I, if I ever learn to speak, I want to tell him that I shouldn't feel guilt. They shouldn't feel guilty about me. Both Hacker and I did our fair share of thoughtless acts of cruelty to people we didn't know. The consequences reaching us much reaching much further than we could possibly imagine. In a way, I think that fa the fact that Burry's sins are fundamentally so familiar to ours makes it easier to come to terms with my own. After all, if I forgive Burry, I have to treat myself to the same rules, right? I feel like sometimes it's much easier to forgive someone else than to be kind to your own self. Are you okay? You're being quiet. I chuckle. The sound of my laughter comes out. I look at him, wagging my tail. <laughs> oh, come on. You know what I mean. You don't really speak yet, true. But I can usually tell a lot from, like, your body language and stuff. Oh, man. We should do pack mentality sometime soon again. The last time we sang together while well, on it, it was magical. Yes, it was. A surprise by how easily connecting with Luke comes to me. Maybe that's because he's my brother's mate? Acri went a minute, but I can see that he's grown a genuine connection to him. If my brother trusts him, he is a true member of our little pack. That makes me happy. Acri won't be alone when I die. Well, I have only one relic for you to investigate today. A special one. Check this out. 
He takes something off of his back and wraps it. A long blue tube with wires. It's like an ancient loot. Kinda. Or kinda? You've seen an instrument before, right? Or maybe you didn't. I don't know. I actually learned how to play a lute, you know? Back, at, back home, with cats, my dad taught me and my brother some music. This thing was completely different than the lute, but, like, it's still a string instrument. I kind of did some investigation on it on my own the past few days, just, uh, just to get a better feel of it. And, let's see. He takes a deep breath, as if braces himself, and then exhales slowly. His fingertips brush over the strange instrument's wires. I didn't know what to expect, and those sounds catch me completely off guard. A voice of an instrument, filled with emotions. I can't help but be awestruck by this miracle. A lifeless tool doesn't have a heart, it doesn't breathe or think, and yet it speaks through the language of souls. I know. It's a human pulling the strings, an extension, in extension, it's his own voice being spoken through the lute. But isn't that in a way how relationships work? In every pack, you have those passive, mute dogs, either because of reputation or because they haven't found the strength to pr pursue their wills yet. Some people will use those dogs to do their bidding and enforce their own will onto the world, wearing them down in the process. That's what the Oprah Pride did to us. However, there are also those who use their influence in a way to give strength and direction to those who lack their voice. They feed them the beauty of this world, and once it takes roots, it grows inside their hearts, ready to be passed further. That's why I believe the human is doing with this loot. That's what I believe this relationship to Shelter is. He's like an avian bard, leading a tavern into song. But in the end, it's up to us to decide what the music we play is going to be about. After that, I joined you in singing. It was a very nice day. It gave me that loot, and it became my most precious possession to this day. I've been taking the best care of it, I swear. You also told me about your family, about your late father, who taught you to be a good person, about your younger brother, Sun Sanson, whom I'm sure you're still destined to meet again. You told me so much, and yet it felt like you hid even more. It fills me with grief and shame to know you forsake so many of your precious secrets for the sake of someone like me. I promise I'll make sense of it very soon. I'll make, se I'll make sense very soon. I'm getting to that. It's just that I wanted to let you know how sorry I am. I couldn't have gotten stronger early enough to prevent what came soon after that. I tried. I'm sorry what kind of dog Aggie was turned into, and once I found out what you and him were planning to do, I summoned all my courage to confront him. Aggie, the thoughts I spoke words before that night, I talked to him, but no, that was the very my very first time. I really put all of my strength into it and broke my limits to voice out that plea to him. When he rejected me, I... I was lost. I used to be a real mess in general. That much is clear to anyone. I thought I was going past my pathetic self, but apparently not fast enough. 
I, if mere speech came with such difficulty to me that not even my hardest attempt could even be brushed off with no effort, I started to wonder if I would ever have enough time to heal completely. And unfortunately, time wasn't the luxury I could have afforded anymore. Once I came back to shelter, I tried to communicate with all my friends to get their attention and help. I approached Burry, Rune, Thistle, and Cooper, one after another. I tried to voice out to them that something was wrong, but in the end, none of them, none of those encounters, accounted to, amounted to anything. Burry assumed my discomfort was related to my health, and he gave me a quick treatment. Rune just kind of brushed me off and offered me a drink to cheer me up. Thistle told me a long anecdote from his adolescence, thinking of us having some kind of romantic problem. By the time I approached Cooper, I was so completely defeated, I just left before giving him a proper chance at understanding me. In the end, I once again did what Akri told me to do. I went to the obscured entrance to shelter by foot of the mountain where you were waiting to woken my other brothers. My brothers. Huh. I still call them like that. Huh. Sorry. It's a bit of a sore topic, but I'll still keep going. You deserve to know everything that happened, no matter how painful or shameful those memories are to me. Hmm. I think since we're at the 30 minute mark, and there might be a bit longer, that might be a good time to call it. Oh, that scene change. Ooh, woo. So, the end of this let's play. So, please comment, because I like comments, tell me what you like, dislike, tips, etc. If you like my YouTube and like to see it grow, then please like, subscribe, and check out the rest of Epic Grow. And please remember to make new animals to help control the pet population. And if you want to play this game, it's available for free on H.I.O. But if you want to, let's see, play, get the most up to date version of this game, or help them, it's available on Patreon. Hold on. Sorry, I got the herbs. And it's no shelter, not Sugar Lane. I do want to play Sugar Lane because the wolf lady came out. But I have to do other things. Hey, I, I have a weak spot for wolf ladies. Sue me. Do, do, do. Um, so let's see. Newest build uh, is $5 a month. Though you can do it yearly, which would be 50 a year. Hyena, I think. Anyways, until next time. On another Let's Play. Hey, this hired wolf six of shelter. I'm sorry, it's just all of a sudden I'm like, hey, we're gonna have all the energy of somebody that's been up for 48 hours. Oh well, thank you, Cynthia.